Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We'll check out the front pages and bring you up to speed with all of the headlines that's making the rounds across board. And we do have Akim Bola uh, on standby who will join us in analysing some of the stories on the front pages of our national dailies. I start off with the Daily Trust newspaper this morning and find out what big stories are making the rounds. On the Daily Trust newspaper this morning, you have bandits impose levies on Sokoto communities, issues ultimatum for payment. Bandits impose levies on Sokoto communities, issue ultimatum for payment. Residents don't trust security agents and opt for payment. Please, state government, MUM. Ex-local government chairman once again compliance. How rivalry fights demand notorious Zamfara bandit. And the final of the details on page three. Paris Club refund will not accept arbitrary deductions from federal government. Uh, you have the governors quoted on that. It's illegal for federal government to pay fuel subsidy from federation account. Sanusi is quoted. And just before we move away from the Daily Trust newspaper, you also have abduction. Over 12 million children traumatized, afraid of going to school. President Muhammad Buhari is quoted on that. You also have another header saying, Buhari's exit will end Nigeria's crisis. Uh, Afeni Ferris is quoted on that as well. That's on page six. Anxiety as appeal court delivers ruling on secondary suits tomorrow. That's also another header on the Daily Trust. You find information on page 40. All right, and now to the Daily Independent. Big story there says, plots to halt PDP National Convention thickens. Party may exit equity. An another state over conflicting delegates says it does not expect court ruling to put convention at risk. Forex scarcity hampering our operations, and that's from manufacturers. Some APC leaders will defect to PDP soon, says Bukola Saraki. It says also it's illegal to pay petrol subsidy from Federation account, Sanusi. CGN vows to read judiciary of bad eggs. We can also find on the Daily Independent, federal government moves to end uh, casualization, blames banks and oil firms over practice. Anambra gubernatorial, 81,778 newly printed PVCs available for collection, says INEC. Still on the Daily Independent, Buhari uh, links insecurity to inequalities and unfair policies. An Anambra gubernatorial election, IGP deploys two DIGs, five AIGs, 14 CPs, 31 DCPs, and, and 48 ACPs. Those are the stories on the Daily Independent. Let's move away from the Daily Independent and check out the leadership newspaper this morning. The board caption says, amid rising insecurity, IGP deploys 100 DIGs, AIGs, CSPs for Anambra governorship poll. It's on page four. President Mohamed Buhari woes investors and promise good returns. Uh, that's what you find. Uh, another header says, Chief Judge of Nigeria asks judges and lawyers to punch self of wrath. That's also uh, captioned on page eight. And federal government to harmonize workers' salaries in December. It's on page six. Fiel subsidy will be removed in July 2022. That's what the federal government is quoted to say. And women can rescue Nigeria from current challenges. Akira Dolu is quoted on page nine. And uh, Explosion Rocks or your correctional center. Find more information on page or two. Legal battle dims as PDP's hope of successful convention, uh, you know, comes through. That's what you also find on the leadership newspaper. That's so much we can take on the leadership today. Pick up a copy. I'm sure you get all of the information. And now to the punch. Federal government lists the Ziani's buildings, jewelry, bras for sale. Values, bodies, mansions. Suspects, wedding gowns, invisible bras, and 64 pairs of shoes for sale. 1,620 items, including cars, houses, phones, 
laptops, and vessels listed. Power, poor transportation, and port facilities killing Nigeria's manufacturers, says additional. NNPC market has inflated petrol, uh, imported petrol uh, figures under Buhari and Jonathan, says uh, Sanusi. And we can also find on the punch, 22 governors apply as federal government begins model ranch, uh, model ranch um, funds disbursement next week. Um, Oshun pleads for understanding as protesting retirees shot state secretariat. And Buhari's exit in 2023, solution to Nigeria's problem, says Afenifer. Ikiti Headsman bags life imprisonment for grazing on cassava farm and shooting owner. PDP hints of NEC meeting if appeal court stops convention. And we can also find the Rigby Shola Shons Akonde's meeting with APC Elders Caucus as a police defuse bomb found at attacked Oyo prison. Those are the stories on the Punch newspapers this morning. Uh, pretty interesting. And, uh, of course, uh, you, you may have uh, spotted the PDP's national convention discussion um, all over the papers this morning. Um, you know, it seems like they still haven't, or they, they as a party still haven't been able to, you know, settle all the underlying issues that they might have. And, of course, that includes Uche Secondus uh, still um, uh, going to court. Um, I'm not sure how this will really affect, you know, their chances in 2023 and, you know, also, at, you know, at the state level. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, pretty interesting story with the, um, um, what was it called now, the uh, uh, Deziani uh, on the punch newspapers this morning. It says there, uh, federal government lists Deziani's buildings, jewelry, and bras for sale. Values Bade's mansions. <laughs> it says also suspects, uh, wedding gowns, invisible bras. No, what, when, what's when what's an invisible, invisible bra? I, I was going to ask you. I should be question. asking you. What? I have no idea. <laughs> Invisible bras. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so um, there's actually a market. Uh, that means that, you know, people can actually go out there and want to buy. You know how you have a really... Well, this, I don't, I'm not sure if these are things that, you know, you can point out as proceeds from corruption. It's, 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 these are very <clears throat> personal things. Yes, absolutely. And I understand jewelry, you know, and um, property, you know, maybe even cars, you know, and, and, and some of all of bras? that. But, you know, if you go all the way down to shoes and bras, I'm, I, I don't know, you know, if um, I really, it's, it's just maybe, of course, you know, if uh, Demola Kimbola, you know, you know, he was here, he'll be able to explain better. Um, you know, but it, it, it's, a, it's an ongoing conversation concerning the fight against corruption. So, you know, I'm guessing that the federal government understands what they're doing and they understand that some of these things very likely were proceeds from um, um, corruption, as uh, she's been accused of. Um, um, also, you know, some of the things that have made headlines this morning, AKT headsman bags life imprisonment for grazing on cassava farm and shooting owner, um, which is, you know, a very interesting story. And the reason is um, you, you, we've had, you know, numerous conversations in the last couple of years concerning what the government really is doing to, you know, end the insecurity, to put his foot down and let, you know, people know that the government will, you know, always and always, you know, fight insecurity regardless of what you know the reason behind it is you know farmers had us crisis um you know tribal you know clashes you know that you you would hear every now and then in in some communities in Ebon or in cross river um you hear about some of these things every now and then you hear that 10 people were killed you know in in, in communal clashes um but you never get to hear that people were arrested and people have been sentenced to jail and so it's 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 important um, I believe that we start to ensure that people who are found guilty of some of these things, houses that were burnt in some communal clash, or maybe you know, bandits that attacked a village and you have some of them arrested, they should um, be, in, be made to go through the justice system and be sent to jail or to prison. Or whatever, if, you, if, if it's, a, it's a death sentence that uh, you know, their crimes um, attract, then they should. Um, when we continue to, if, if as a country, we fail to prosecute every single crime like this, um, from arson to communal clashes, anything that has um, an effect on the value of the Nigerian life and Nigerian property that is not punished creates space for more and more people to commit those crimes. And that's why you might read in the papers that 22 people were killed in, I don't know if Nigeria is the only place that you hear about communal clashes and people just move on on a Monday morning. You know that 18 people were killed in Ebonyi or in Cross River, in Akwaibom. And we just move on on a Monday morning as okay. 
Um, there's never a follow-up to say that, you know, the persons that, you know, were responsible for those deaths, the, the villagers, you know, the youths in that community, you know, have been arrested. They will be prosecuted. They will be sent to jail. They will be, um, you know, whatever it is that the, the law prescribes for, uh, prescribed for, for those um, acts. And, and that's, uh, you know, you're very correct. And that's because we constantly, because we don't have arrest, uh, there's no arrest, no one has been punished. Or however, even if arrest is made, to what extent uh, would you say justice has been served? <coughs> all of this constantly emboldens uh, all of those committing all of this crime. So, and, and that's why you constantly find a reputation of it. So with a country until, I, I feel like sometimes we're not even ready. We, we're, not, we're not even ready to, you know, to do the things that we want to do. Because it's not that we don't understand what we should do. But I just feel like we just don't want to do it. There's no will to do it. Yeah, that's the policy. Because will. at the end of the day, you, we have lofty, we have lofty, uh, what's it called, laws, policies of government. We have several, you know, agencies and all what have you. But what happens when you come to the point of implementation? Now, the security, let's even stay with security issues and concern. You would also want to agree with me that um, the, the issues of security are encompassing. So, yes, you find peculiar issues. There are issues of boundary dispute. Up until now, I mean, from 1960, up until this time, you want to trace it back. You find out that there's still issues that are still lingering. Yeah. How come we haven't come out with solutions that we can, you know, I mean, sustainable solutions, solutions that would be long lasting, that can uh, solve the problem once and for all. So we still have some of these issues lingering. You have the issue of, because now if you, if you look at some of the crisis that we're faced with, uh, a lot of persons are marginalized. Some people feel that we're not carried along. Some people feel very agitated. And so all of that, you also have the issue of unemployment as well. So they're really encompassing. You have the issues of conflict. You also have you know, religious issues and uh, all of the clashes. But how come we're not addressing these issues? We're not going to the root of them because that's the only way to solve the problem. So it feels like we're about the symptoms. These are manifestations of yeah. these issues. The and so we just try to see how we can you know, take care of the symptoms. But the root cause of all of this, uh, we're not paying attention to them. I understand the, the narrative that the justice system you know, may not you know, be as, as interesting you know, and as, as juicy as it should be. And that's why a lot of people don't trust that you know, if you, if you, uh, you know, go to court, you will get a favorable ruling and you would get you know justice for some of these crimes but the nigerian government continuously needs to ensure that it makes it clear that the response to um what would you call them not community clashes now border disputes the response to um, um farmers and herders um you know issues with you know with, with feeding their cattle should never be be murder it should never be taking the you know a nigerian life simply because a cow was killed it should never be taken in Nigerian life because you're having border issues between two communities that have existed for a long time. And that's what the Nigerian government needs to continuously ensure that it makes clear to every single Nigerian. The you know, unknown gunmen that we've heard about for you know, in the southeast and across the country for a very, very long time, um, you would expect in a sane society that the ones who burnt this police station, the ones who burnt that INEC office, the ones who uh, you know, murdered um, Dr. Chike Akonyili, you know, somehow have been arrested. You, you would expect that the government will continuously ensure that those people are found, they are, you know, arrested, they are put through the justice system, and they are sentenced to whatever it is that, you know, they, they, that they deserve. But when you fail to do that, and that's why it's been weeks now, Dr. Chike Akunili's murderers have still not been found. There's still no news that tells us that, oh, these are the people who committed this act, and they have been arrested. And so we very likely as a country are going to move on and say well it's unfortunate that, we unfortunate have moved that it on. happened uh, exactly and so when you when those type of things happen it creates you know the boldness for other criminals and other criminal groups to say well you know if all these things if that village was burnt if those two police officers were killed and nobody was arrested i might as well do the same thing let's also and not expect that i will be caught let's also even talk about uh what's it called uh, the recent attack on the trail uh you know the rail lines exactly. the tracks and the clips exactly how come we haven't apprehended those who committed this crime because they live in a space now it brings me back to the conversation of saying security I want us to move beyond. I'm hoping that we can move beyond saying security, you know, is everyone's concern. It's not about government. When you see something, say something. Because it has become a cliche. It has become a phrase for us. And so we just mouth it. But there is no doing to that part. And then that's because um, the people who commit this crime, the people who commit all of this crime, leave with us. These people are not spirit. 
These people are our brothers, they are our sisters, they are our uncles, aunties. You want to go on with the least, our neighbors. So it starts from there. Now we understand the fact that uh, some people would say, oh, we cannot report crimes to the police because we do not trust the police. Now, uh, you want to also talk about the fact that, yes, the police also has a responsibility, a role to play. I I'm hoping that with all of this protest and all that's going on, the Nigerian police we should but sit back to say, how do we redeem our image? How do we now gain the trust of the people? And, and that's what brings the issue of, um, I'm sure you would you would want to agree with me also that sometimes those who commit um, you know jungle justice would say oh that's because the law would not take his cause we don't trust the justice system we don't even trust the entire police system and so let's take the laws into our hands so the, the fight against security it's encompassing I'm thinking that we as a people have a role to play as well we need to begin to say there are a lot of things we need to begin to say because these people live around us and these things happen and then we keep quiet you see somebody who is doing something you're not reporting and then when you report what happens Somebody's snitching on you. They, they would come back and attack you. Wow. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that we get to a point that we, the sincerity of heart, we're very sincere and we're ready to tackle this issue. But up until then, I'm not sure we're going to get it because the government has a role to play. We have a role to play. I would say it's a 50-50 if you ask me. I'll say it's a 70-30 right away. <laughs> Anyway, um, in Anambra State, uh, on the Daily Independent, it says the Anambra uh, gubernatorial election, IGP deploys, and listen once again, two DIGs, five AIGs, 14 CPs, 31 DCPs, and 48 ACPs for one election. I'm not sure what we're going to do in 2023, but that's, you know, a later conversation. As we get closer, I'm sure that they'll have figured out how to spread more of these security, you know, um, and police, um, you know, AIGs, DIGs, ABCs, XYZs across the country in order to ensure that the 2023, uh, 2023 general elections are safe. But here's the thing. Um, we, we, we had a conversation yesterday. Unfortunately, it wasn't long enough to understand exactly what, you know, needs to be done in Anambra State. Um, when, when we see stories like this, I feel like as, as a people, we should be ashamed that this is what it is, is required to have just one election. Just one election requires this number. It's 30, it says about 30,000 policemen will be sent to Anambra for just one election. And I think that we should be ashamed as a country that this is where we found ourselves. And if over time, I mentioned um, Dr. Chike Akunyili, if over time the Nigerian police was able to arrest every single person, find every single person who's responsible for the crime and for the insecurity in those parts of the country, you wouldn't need to send 100,000 policemen to a state for just one election. Because over time, in the last couple of weeks, in the last couple of months, you would have been able to gather enough intelligence, you would have been able to at least stop the, you know, the, these criminal gangs and these criminal groups, regardless of what their backing is, IPOB, ESN, or maybe just mere criminals, you would have been able to do it. But we haven't. And that's why we need 30,000 policemen. We need 18 DIGs and 47 CPs and 98 ACPs and the likes for just one election. Um, the conversation about, I think it was yesterday, we were speaking about Saturday schooling in Anambra State and how, you know, I said it, and I've said it over and over and over, that it really has continued to show that the governor and the governance in, in the Southeast has completely failed. And the only reason that they are still there is because, well, there's nothing, you know, the people of the South is not able to vote out people or the State House of Assembly are not able to, you know, kick governors out of, of, out of office. But it shows that they have failed. If the governor is thinking about Saturday schooling um, because he no longer can control people in Anambra State on Mondays and tell them and assure them that they are safe to come out. He, he obviously cannot control them also on the election day and tell them that they are safe to come out on election day and vote. It's a, it's a really, really sad, sad picture. So it reminds me of, uh, you know, the lyrics in uh, one of Bonner Boyce's song. Uh, he talks about the monster that we have created, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, th that monster is, we're faced with that monster now. And how we're going to take it off is also another question because we can't kill it. If you kill it, you're killing the people. Now... For, so one would actually think that because, yes, we had this conversation yesterday. And for me, one of the concern is if a lot of people are saying, let's have conversations, let's come to the table and have a dialogue. But how do you now have a dialogue with someone you have tagged an enemy? You have already proscribed 
a terrorist. But however, government is a very powerful um, you know, institution anywhere in the world. Government is very, very powerful. And I'm thinking that it, it is within their powers you know, to ensure that there is uh, peace, you know, there is protection of lives and properties, that which obviously they have actually failed and it calls for a lot of consent. One would expect that uh, with all of these things that's going on, some persons are feeling agitated. Some people are saying, oh, this is what it is. And instead of you to listen to their plea and listen to the complaint and say, okay, what exactly are you saying? You're saying we did this and that. Can we find a way to solve this problem? Rather, we're just thinking that, you know, the fire approach, it's the best way out. It is really, really sad. I mean, looking at the number of police, now, what is the guarantee? Because over time, I'm thinking that for every time we have an election, at the end of every election year, we're supposed to have a review. We're supposed to sit back and say, okay, what, where did we get it right? Where did we get it wrong? And see on how to we can improve. Because at the end of the day, if you have all of those analysis and sit back on the table, then it would help you, you know, to take better decisions and improve the next election. Now, one of the things that have actually cause um, political apathy, uh, the fact that a lot of people don't turn up for elections over the years, is the fact that our elections are t totally militarized. Because of that, it scares a lot of people. I mean, sometimes you go, you go out, you see the police officers, you see them with the um, the guns, you see all, everyone, almost everybody is there, the customs, you see everybody yep. out there. And so that's really, really, so for us to one would expect that at every time we have an election, government will say, okay, what, where did we get it wrong? Why did people not come out? Rather than, um, you know, sit back on the drawing board or sit back on the table and look at the drawing board and ask all of these valid questions to see how we can improve the elections, we're still doing the same thing, the same thing over and over again. I can't really, you know, uh, pick points, but at the time, uh, the 2017 elections in Anambra State recorded about um, 400 and something thousand persons that voted. No actual figures right now, but about 400 and something thousand. Uh, this is not, we're not talking about number of registered voters. We're talking yeah. about number of valid votes casted. We're not even talking about number of votes that were casted, you know, because you have invalid votes and you have, you know, valid casted votes. So I don't know. We're, we're also, you know, uh, via INEC, they have said that um, we have over 2.5 million persons who have registered about that. Now, um, you know that that number and those who would turn up also would be a different thing. I don't know if we're still going to record, you know, we're going to have um, that kind of number that we had in 2017 that saw um, Obiano emerging as the governor of an Amber state. So um, I don't know when we're going to reduce, you know, the present. And we're not saying you can't have, but we need to reduce it because constantly we find out that our elections have been, you know, militarized and mm -hmm. with all of that numbers. And people will ask you, so we have all of these police officers, how come we have not deployed them to all of these areas, you know, that need um, uh, security attention at oh, this point in time. It's, it's, it's important. Anyway, we'll take a short break. When we come back, a little bit of history for you. We'll be telling you something that happened today, a really sad day in football, um, you know, where uh, the helicopter crash led to the loss of life uh, that, of course, shook the world. And then right after that, our first major conversation for today here on The Breakfast. Good morning.